We'll be going over IRS Notice CP01E, Employment Related Identity Theft Notice. So uh, this one page notice basically says uh, it's a notification from the Internal Revenue Service uh, saying that uh, they believe someone, someone else may have used your social security number to obtain empo employment. So uh, we'll kind of walk through what this form looks like and uh, what you should do, what this might mean for you and certain resources that you might have access to. So up in the top right hand corner, you'll see the notice type CP01E. Uh, the tax year, in this case, this is kind of an example. So it's from 2018 with a notice date of January 28th, 2019 and it's got an IRS contact number. So obviously, and then your taxpayer name, address, city, state, and zip code would go into that field right there as the addressee. So I'm gonna point out two things that I've said in every one of these uh, IRS notice videos. Uh, first, uh, even if you don't think that you're going to have correspondence with the IRS, you should always keep your address up to date with the Internal Revenue Service. Uh, so uh, if you're sent one of these notices and you did nothing to initiate it, uh, if you don't have your address on file with the IRS, then who knows when you'll find out about your possible identity theft. Uh, but two, if there's something that the IRS needs you to take action on, uh, for example, if you uh, are behind on taxes and you don't get this notification, the IRS is just going to assume that you've been receiving communications and your lack of response uh, indicates that you agree with their assessment. So if they assess a tax penalty, uh, you're, you're going to have a certain period of time after the notice date to take some sort of action. You can always take action if you disagree with the IRS, but you know, after a certain period of time, it may be too late for your action to have any uh, effect. So some things uh, the IRS says you need to respond within 30 days or 60 days. So pay attention to the notice date in case there is an action required and then make sure that your address is up to date. So if you, uh, if you file your tax return, that's one way to keep your address up to date. Uh, you can simply just put your new address in your tax return. You can call the IRS and verify your identity and uh, that's another way that you can do that uh, by, by the phone. Or you can file IRS form 8822, which is the official change of address form. So uh, we'll put links in the show notes to resources on IRS form 8822, as well as 8822B, which is the uh, change of address for uh, a business. So with those administrative items out of the way, Let's take a look at this theft notice. So uh, kind of says right there, employment related identity theft. So in this case, uh, the IRS believes or has some reason to believe that someone used your social security number to get a job. Uh, at this point, there's no known impact to your tax account because of this potential misuse. However, the IRS is just letting you know so you can take steps uh, to protect yourself. Uh, you can't receive specific information, so don't try to call the IRS to find out if your cousin's brother's neighbor down the street, you know, did something with your mail. They, they're not going to be able to tell you that. However, the IRS has put a marker on your tax account, which means uh, that uh, you don't need to file IRS form 14039. That's the identity theft affidavit. They've already flagged your account. So there are certain protections that the IRS will uh, help you go through if uh, your account has been flagged with some sort of identity theft, uh, theft marker. So uh, we'll kind of go through what some of these things uh, will, you know, what you need to do. So the IRS will say, hey, keep filing your tax returns. 
uh, review your earnings with the Social uh, Security Administration because you'll want to make sure that the records are up to date with your payroll records. And then they also uh, put the contact information for the three major credit reporting bureaus, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. So uh, as an American consumer, you have access to a um, to pull your credit report from each of these uh, every year. So you don't you don't necessarily get your credit score, but what you will get if you go through either of these credit uh, bureaus, um, what you'll get is a copy of a report, and it's usually a pretty long report, and it'll show you every single account with every single creditor that you've opened in recent history, the past seven years-ish. So basically, you can go through that. You can see if any mysterious accounts were opened. You can see if there's suspicious activity. You can make sure if you have a dispute with, you know, a credit card company or, hey, I paid that bill. Uh, this will be a, an official way to be able to recognize that. And then you have op options to fix your credit. And if you're wondering on the side how to fix your credit, probably the first place to start would be to pull up a copy of your credit report from one of these uh, three credit bureaus and then just go through to make sure that they're accurate. Um, a lot of times credit ratings can be screwed up because of, um, you know, someone filing, misfiling a report that impacted your credit. So, um, that's what this information is for. Uh, and the IRS says you only need to contact one of those credit bureaus and that bureau is supposed to contact the other two. If you need information returns such as a form W2, 1099, 1098, the IRS gives you contact information to reach out. And then there are also additional resources in case you um, have more questions or you are interested in learning a little bit more about, you know, what you can do about your, um, your, your situation. So basically, uh, you can go to this right here. The, this first link is the, um, what to do if you receive this. So let's go to that CPL one E notice page, you know, kind of walk you through what we just talked about. You can, uh, file a report with law enforcement, like either your local police department, you can go uh, to the Federal Trade Commission to, uh, to um, file a report. Uh, one thing that wasn't mentioned in that notice that may be worth looking into, and one of the reasons why I clicked this link, is because you can obtain an identity protection PIN or an IPPIN. So this is a six digit number that the IRS will issue you if they flagged your account and you've requested this PIN. That means that a tax return cannot be filed without uh, you putting in the correct PIN number. Uh, it actually will just lock out that tax return. So if someone's stolen your social security number, uh, then you know this is a layer of protection that will make sure that they can't file a fraudulent tax return. Uh, one of the bigger, bigger scams is that someone will file a tax return fraudulently, uh, padded with a bunch of, you know, erroneous credits and deductions and adjustments to income so that they can get a huge tax refund. And then uh, you're left foot in the bill because once the IRS finds out, they're going to come back after you. They've already gotten the money and now it's just between you and the IRS. So another reason to make sure that you protect your identity is because this could happen under your nose and then the IRS could come back and hold you accountable. So there are additional resources. You can go to the IRS uh, identity theft website, uh, and they also have identity theft information for tax professionals uh, so that you can kind of understand what your accountant, your you know, CPA firm is required to do, what they can do, what might happen you know, in, in situations, and then also for businesses because uh, you know, scams also happen to businesses as well. So... Uh, that's basically all we have for this notice. It's, I mean, this notice is a one pager. 
No action is required, but a lot of recommendations, especially anytime identity theft is uh, brought up as an issue. So ultimately, it's important to keep your address up to date, and then you keep on top of any identity theft related correspondence from the IRS. We'll put links in the show notes to the articles and videos that we've created on these forms that we've mentioned. Um, if you like our articles, please subscribe to our newsletter. If you like our YouTube videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, or if there's a topic that you'd like to see in an upcoming uh, video, please hit me up in the comments section. Thank you very much and have a great day.